Well, I'm David Smith. I'm a QA director at Phantom, uh, and we create a security automation platform, which the user-facing side is actually largely Python, as well as the test framework I've set up. So question to you guys is, how many of you are developers? Raise your hand. Uh, figures. <laughs> Come to a Python group, know your audience. How many are testers? I mean, every developer, right. every so developer who actually tests test their stuff. <laughs> so your developers who test your own stuff. And right? we have to deploy it sometimes, too. <laughs> so um, I actually have a, a, an EE background, and I started using robot framework uh, testing network hardware. Uh, so I've actually, I'm, I'm pretty good at, you know, taking a hammer and a nail and using it for something completely wrong like metalwork. I, I do the wrong things with the right tools sometimes. Uh, one of the things, so the testers, how many of you use a already existing open source framework to your testing? Oh, nice. Is it Cucumber? Is it Robot Framework? Oh, you got a couple. Okay, sweet. I'm in good hands. Something, what, it, what, it, what is it that you use? So people use PyTest and unit tests for right. things that aren't unit tests. Right. <laughs> so hopefully by the time I'm done, you'll understand why you're wrong and I'm right. <laughs> that, there's a reason I'm sitting here. <laughs> but no, there actually is nothing that's wrong. And actually one of the beauties about Robot Framework is you can do your tests or whatever you want in whatever language you want and whatever thing you want to do it in. If you put it in that framework that actually and I'll get to it, that it helps you accomplish your end goal, basically. Um, speaking of open sourcing, I've open sourced this entire presentation from the kind people at Nokia. Actually, I was looking at building my own for this, and I, I was looking at the one that they had on their site, and this is literally the robot framework intro on the robot framework site. There really isn't a better way to give people like a first high-level view of what it is and what it does. Uh, it is a generic automation framework. Uh, so it can be used, like I said, hammer, nail, metal work. Uh, it can be used for acceptance driven development, testing. It can be used for whatever you want, basically. It is just a framework. Try not to think about what language it's written in, although it's Python, which seems appropriate for who we all are. Uh, it can do Iron Python, Jython. I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's Jython. Uh, can be extended with whatever you want to throw at it. Uh, other languages, it, uh, there are Selenium libraries. There's a huge open source community that's active and working on it. Um, I actually looked at this and Cucumber and made this one my friend, although Cucumber has its merits as well. Um, this is a high level architecture diagram, so pretty straightforward. You've got the very bottom what you're trying to test. Uh, originally, I was using it for actually network hardware. Now I use it for Phantom, which is a purely software product. Uh, above that, you have your layer of testing, so your tools, your test libraries, then robot framework, and then test data. The best thing about robot framework, you write clear text test cases that pretty much anyone should be able to read. Uh, sometimes they get a little convoluted and complicated, but that's my own fault when I design the test. Uh, but literally, what you read is what you get out of the test. Uh, this is a good, quick example, in fact, although it doesn't do anything. Uh, open browser to page, put in a username, put in a password, submit. Web page should be open. That's the actual test criteria. And then tear down, et cetera. So uh, one of the things that, um, let's see in a higher level of detail that it handles for you is it automatically handles all the error handling and timeouts and reporting and everything else that you would actually want to be part of your test system instead of you having the right code to do it for you. So data-driven test example, so invalid username, so you have choices, invalid username, valid password, valid user, et cetera. You, you basically can create keywords that do the various combinations of testing that you actually want to do. Uh, Gherkin syntax, again, so valid login. 
given if the browser is open to a login page, when the user demo logs in with password mode, then welcome page should be open. So again, you've got what is your test case scenario? When should that happen? And what is the result? Uh, you can create series of keywords. Again, this is actually pretty much what you would have in a test case, but the very simplistic uh, guts of it. Um, you can have a keyword that says open to open browser to the login page uh, or login page should be open, input username, input password, and these become reusable keywords throughout the rest of your test cases. So you can very quickly create a library of code for whatever it is you're testing that you can then reuse in other test cases. Uh, here's a, a snippet from the actual Selenium library that comes from, uh, or that is for robot framework, uh, just to kind of give you an idea if any of you do UI testing. Um, the, the same backend, basically, you have a Python library, you create a class, you create your, your functions within it. Those all become available effectively as keywords. So if we go back and look at this case, uh, here we have uh, input text or title should be. So in this case, you say login page should be open. Well, title should be login page. So that's exactly pulling it from your own library that you've built or from one that you've chosen uh, to import. Uh, this is just a, a simplistic example showing how you can handle some variables. You create them by literally typing in the variable name you want and the value. Uh, or you can override from a uh, command line. Uh, you can tag all of your test cases. You can tag them in, uh, in a manner that is not just by test case by itself, but by a hierarchical manner. Um, I use this extensively to make sure that I can test various sections of my platform uh, one at a time if I want, or also in the reports I can grab complete statistics for a certain set of tags. I'll show you that in a moment, what it looks like. So here's a, just their generic screenshot of test reports. I'm gonna show you a better one. There's also detailed logs, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, they have a complete set of standard libraries. So there's operating system libraries for handling file system operations, directory listings, find, etc. cetera. Uh, you can take screenshots. Telnet, SSH, whatever it is, there's probably already a library for the interface that you need to other devices uh, or systems. Um, external licenses or external libraries obviously must be installed separately. You can have Selenium, you can have SSH library, HTTP library. Uh, in my case, I have the uh, Phantom generator for Phantom, which creates uh, random data for our platform that helps me test the platform. Um, and you can have project and team specific, of course. Uh, this one shows, so they have a ride editor, which is the robot framework editor that some people like to use, um, which basically a UI to help you create test cases. This one in particular, uh, I looked at, I haven't looked at it recently. I'm sure it's gotten much better in the last two years since I looked at it. I actually prefer Eclipse. Uh, and part of that is there's a robot plugin for Eclipse. You can open a test case. Uh, it shows you where you've you know, grammatically or, uh, or basically made spelling errors or, or I'll, I'll show you in a moment, the uh, formatting errors. Uh, but bottom line is there's plenty of plugins for whatever tool you like. Um, the other beauty of Eclipse is it's already got a million other plugins for other things. So if I'm editing a JSON file, I can look at the JSON file and see exactly what the formatting is that's wrong, uh, Python, etc. So the easy integration portion, these are all created, uh, test suites are created from files and directories. And I'll show you a good example of that. Uh, command line interface, which uh, I've done a good job of hiding for myself using Jenkins. Um, the tests are all output, the results are actually all output in XML, uh, which is then reformatted into the reports that they provide you. So at any time, you can actually go back and write your own script and generate your own reports or statistics, whatever you want out of that. Uh, and then there's, of course, plugins for other build tools. 
So there's that. I'm not showing you the do's and don'ts. Today was meant to be just like the super high level intro to what is robot. Um, be more than happy to go into greater detail if you guys would like. You have about five minutes left if you'd like. I've got something to show you. Okay. I'm not done yet. Don't kick me off. <laughs> Show you my recycle bin first. <laughs> so I've got uh, what is the test results folder from a particular test suite uh, where I've you know happily saved a whole bunch of garbage. There's screenshots, uh, the Phantom Eula page from Selenium drops in here, a uh, bunch of other random garbage. There's test data that I use across the entire reports. Here's a Good example of a failed test report, the giant red screen. So what I was telling you, uh, great reporting. This is really the biggest problem in testing that most uh, QA, at least manager and up level have, which is how do I tell my boss, how bad is our product today? <laughs> <laughs> so here's a good example. Hey boss, we passed 64 out of six test cases. We're doing pretty good. Uh, you can actually set with tags, you can get a little bit more creative. Here I've got uh, all the various APIs. I can say almost immediately we've got some kind of asset problem. Uh, REST handler, there's a problem with that. I failed two out of two tests. Uh, oh, UI authentication and login. I mentioned something about authentication issues. So there's a problem with that test. And then that this is just the listing by tag. And then I've also got a listing by the actual test cases. So each test case here shows up with what failed, what passed. I'll show you a good example. No way, Selenium Firefox test failed. <laughs> All right. This is a basic UI test that checks for the EULA. Message, elements not enabled. Uh, let's see, so if I look at the EULA page, can you accept button? Why aren't you enabled? <laughs> All right. So that you can see how quick I was able to just say, and obviously I've already looked at this, but really, <laughs> if my boss were to look at this report, he could click and see that test failed and be like, hey, he's probably got a screenshot of that if it's a UI test. Uh, or you can keep clicking on it. And you can actually see the full detail of that test case. So run test setup, that is green. Uh, return the browser object, that, that's how I failed at creating the library. Phantom login, so that passed. And keep clicking if I want, if I really want to see it. It says found username field logging in. That should be true. Expected login result says found username field logging in. All right, phantom accept EULA. EULA found scrolling. Found accept button, clicking. Timeout waiting for pages left. So it tried to click the accept button and failed. Now that's not it. That's not all. <laughs> this is only the info log level. I can go all the way to trace and it will give me all the rest of the garbage that nobody boss ever wants to see about what happened. <laughs> <in my process. laughs> all the way down to the traceback error that I caught when that element was not enabled. So that's, uh, that's a quick demo of how poorly Selenium works and how <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else should I show? Oh, I was going to show you real quick the uh, hidden phantom test structure or all the rest. So like I said, they're all, all the test cases fit into kind of a structure, but it's kind of, this was the hard part that I battled with for a while when I first got started was how do I organize my structure? Uh, I'm out of time, but I'm gonna kick me out if you want. Okay. So test cases, they're all in folders. So kind of like what you saw in the report, I've got a folder that is set up, a folder that arrests tests, a folder that is some other tests, system tests, bug reproduction, UI tests, et cetera. So you start with these, which are suites, 
They have numbers because robot runs them based on how they are listed in the file directories. And then you can just start digging down. There's setup, see the rest. I've got off assets, blah, blah, blah. Yes. Yeah, so let's get some questions in. Sure. Starting with me. Uh, <laughs> why, why is there a dunder init.txt? Okay, so the init in these folders. This one just forces that any tests within that folder get those tags gotcha. and that documentation. So I don't even have to tell each individual test what tag they get. Other questions? Yeah. Does your boss actually click on failed tests? Leave the fifth. Sure. <laughs> uh, at my level, no. Uh, but, the, but whoever managers, manages the developers would have to. He might. I mean, in this case, usually, he, I mean, we are a small startup. This is a beautiful space, by the way. We are probably one fourth this size right now. So, uh, no, he yells at me what's going on, <laughs> and I tell him across the room what's going on. <laughs> How long does your full test suite take to run? Uh, this. So the, the smoke test, not the full test suite, uh, our current smoke test is about 25, 26 minutes, 11 seconds. OK. So keep in mind, you said you are testing networking hardware. No, in this case, I'm, I work at Phantom. We make software only. However, know? part of what our product does is talk to the internet and other we have 120 apps for our platform. They go out and talk to the network. So some of the things do rely on communicating to the outside world. And robot, does it manage sort of like parallelization? No. OK. It hates it. <laughs> I've never heard of Phantom. What exactly does it do? Uh, so it's a security platform. We, we allow our customers to automate their security process. Um, I can give you a 90 second pitch. I don't know if that's appropriate. Let's talk about it. We can talk about it after. Sure. All right. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. Thank you, David. Thank you,